Aperture is the difference between getting the exact look you want in your video and soul-crushing disappointment that may haunt you for the rest of your life. Now that statement may be just a little hyperbolic, but if you're someone who shoots video either professionally or creatively, you no doubt will want to have as much control as possible over the image you're capturing. Boiled down to its core function, Aperture simply controls the amount of light that hits the sensor of your camera. But this affects a variety of important areas, such as exposure and depth of field. And knowing how to use Aperture, along with your camera's ISO and shutter speed, can help you shoot in any type of lighting scenario and still get the exact look you're going for. Simply defined, Aperture is the opening in a lens through which light passes to enter the camera. It's just like the iris in the human eye, and in fact the physical dial to control your camera's aperture is also called an iris. Cameras. They're basically dumb eyeballs. By opening the aperture of your lens, the wider the hole, the lower the aperture number, you let more light in and, in turn, make your image brighter. So if you're shooting videos indoors and find your image is looking a little too dark, shooting at a low aperture, like f2.8 let's say, will help brighten the image by grabbing as much available light as possible. And on the flip side, if you're shooting video outside on a bright summer day, like we have today, you can close the aperture to something like an f18 and restrict the available light coming in so the image isn't overexposed. In addition to controlling the light that you let into your camera, Aperture also impacts how much of your image is in focus and how much of it appears blurry in the background. Now this blurriness, or bokeh, bokeh, people will fight you over what to call it, is a desirable look for a lot of projects as it has a certain filmic quality that allows you to direct your viewer's focus to specific objects or people in the frame and have the rest fall away into the background. The simple formula is, if you want a blurry background, shoot at a low aperture. If you want everything in focus, shoot at a high aperture. Or to put it another way, if you want everything in focus, you need a lot of available light so you can close the aperture as much as possible. And if you want a blurry background, you might need to reduce the amount of available light so that you can fully open up the aperture. This can present some challenges, however. Let's say you want that buttery smooth bokeh in your video, but you're also shooting outdoors in bright sunlight. You can't just open up your aperture because there's already too much light as it is, and if you close up your aperture, then you won't get that shallow depth of field that you're looking for. One solution to this scenario is ND filters, which screw onto your lens and basically serve as sunglasses for your camera. Like I said, they really are just dumb eyeballs. This will reduce the amount of light coming in, allowing you to potentially open up your aperture wide enough to get that blurriness that your body craves. But let's say you have different lighting challenges, or you want to stylistically control your image in other ways. For this, ISO and shutter speed come into play. Now these are two big topics by themselves, but they make up the other two sides of the exposure trinity, and it's important to understand how they work with aperture to impact your final image. ISO controls your camera's sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO, the brighter your image will become. This comes at the expense of introducing noise into your footage, however, so it's generally recommended to shoot in as low an ISO as possible, or alternatively, a camera will often have a native ISO that it performs best at. Shutter speed, on the other hand, affects motion blur. Greatly oversimplified, in most usage cases, you want your shutter speed to be twice your frame rate in order to get the most flattering and filmic looking motion blur. This means if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you'll want your shutter speed to be either 1 48th or 1 50th of a second, depending on what your camera allows. You can, however, crank up the shutter speed to get a more stylized and sharp look to your footage, say by shooting at 1 over 100 or 1 over 200, but this will also slightly decrease the light coming into the camera. Aperture is one of the most important tools any video shooter has in controlling what their image looks like in camera. Understanding how to use Aperture to shape your depth of field and exposure, as well as how to use it in conjunction with shutter speed and ISO, can empower you to get the exact look you intend to get for every shoot you do. It also ensures you can go into any lighting scenario, no matter how challenging, like if there's light and shade all hitting you at the same time, and still get the best quality your camera's capable of. Because once again, it's really just a dumb eyeball. You gotta help it out sometimes. For more on exposure, videography, and all things imaging, head over to b &H. I'm video producer Nick Brigadier. Stay creative.